okay, and we're back. I didn't miss a podcast. We got some uh, special guests with us today. Hey, hi, everybody. This is Rafael. Hello, I'm Anaí. Okay, welcome. You're welcome. Well, we're here to have some fun and uh, talk about all these different subjects. Uh, last podcast, we talked about uh, the monoliths. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah, we did. And Cordell told me he has a, a follow-up information about that. So what's going on, Cordell? It's going crazy all across the planet still. You know, since November 18th, you know how many of them? 87 of them have been documented worldwide. There's some new footage of and, one and that... Are they all metal, Cordell? A question. Or are they different materials? Are like they wood? And, or are they all specifically just sheet metal? Metal are the ones that are popping up. Okay. You know, a, a real monolith has to be a solid block of granite or stone. Not, not hollow? Not hollow. No, no. Not hollow. And, and you ain't going to see that. You can't erect that in overnight and take it away. There's no way. But, you know, these metal ones, you can put it up in the middle of the night, you know, four or five of your homies. And it makes a difference because sheet metal, like I said before, is not that heavy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you can transport it and build it up pretty quickly with sheet metal. Yeah, because it was like solid steel. You need a group of people or a crane. Yeah. To put it up. Right, right. All are these monoliths? They're different sizes, Cordell, right? Average one is maybe, say, 10 feet tall, 9 feet tall. Yeah, you know, that was like, solid, 10 foot tall. That would be too heavy. No, they're they're hollow. They're metal, yeah. you know. And uh, people, what one was made out of plywood with just sheet metal on the outside. Mm. And that was, he put that outside a store. But the one they found this weekend uh, was Fort Pierce, Florida. And, you know, and it stirred up a little controversy again, because remember how the, the guys po- tore down the other one and chanted Christ is King and... And they wanted illegal aliens and including E.T. out of here? Yeah, that's right. That's now. right. Well, <laughs> some people in Florida got pissed e. off. E.T. might be cool. <laughs> <laughs> not, in their, not in their neighborhood. <laughs> that's right. Apparently. Well, there was a hippie guy sitting down next to it, meditating, touching the monolith, and some people, that caused up a stir with some people, you know, because uh, Deuteronomy 16.22... We, we, I put that in the last episode's video, which says, You shall not set up a sacred pillar, which the Lord your God hates. So in evangelical churches, they don't like those monoliths. And so there's been some sermons going around where they've been preaching against it. So you might hear more that's, of that coming that's soon. interesting, wow. Cordell. <laughs> Has anyone ever attempted to take down the Washington Monument? Oh, no. That's a symblol of their yeah. country and their liberty. It's a, <laughs> <long dollars. laughs> but it's a monolith at the end of the day, right? Right. You know, and that one is covered in, <laughs> that's covered in cement, but it is a metal frame underneath. Oh, for mm. sure. It's not considered a true monolith. There is a company called uh, Imaginary Foundation. They're an art collective and a clothing company. They're selling limited edition desktop monoliths right now for 99 bucks on their website. Which I think they sold out already. Last time I checked, I went back. I'm thinking, well, let's 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 buy one and see. Now they were already sold out. Wow, damn! How many did they make initially? I wonder. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but I think they're gonna make some more. When, when people sell things out, it's because they really got more. They're sitting well, on it to like raise a, the value. That's like a trendy thing. Like you better yeah. hit while the hitting is hot. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't, I don't see people buying monolith desk things in the next year. You know what I mean? Let's go back to ancient Egypt again. We put out a lot of uh, pictures and we talked about that last time. There's another term in Egypt and the word is pylon from the Greek term and it means a gateway. And you might've seen those outside of Egyptian temples. It's two tapering towers in the front of each temple there. Yes. Yes. Well, wherever you see uh, a pylon, you'll also see an obelisk. They go together. And some people will once again say they have electrical acoustic properties that resonate like a tuning fork. So they have different frequencies? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Based on the granites and stones, I guess. But were exactly. you saying something from Lanana the Lost or something, the TV show? Oh, those are the pylons. Those yeah, you remember that? Are, right? That was a Chaka and Pakuni, the Slee Stack? Chaka, the Slee Stacks. These guys, they made a remake with Will Ferrell a few years ago. Sorry. <laughs> but, they have, <laughs> but they have pylons and all that stuff in the show, right? Well, you know, the pylons are used for traveling, time travel. Oh, wow. And in Egyptian literature, that's what a pylon was considered a gateway. You know, even in the Bible, um, they have the term boas and jaquin, which were two copper or brass bronze, uh, bronze pillars, which stood in front of Solomon's temple in Jerusalem. And, you know, Freemasons, 
are all into that and people that are in tarot cards, probably the two pillars that. in the Bible. So that's what I'm saying. These pillars and Christianity go hand in hand. So I think it's ironic, you know, how the kids ran up there to attack it. Yeah. But they don't know what there's there's biblical verses based on attacking those towers. Yeah, well, and also, you, you know, you might have heard of the term Delta Pylon, which is an electrical tower. Yes. You might have seen those on the side of the road. It's a big metal tower where, where the wires go on. And they're like triangular. Yeah. And that's called a Delta Pylon. And you know what it also looks like? They're going to knock those down next. What? It looks like the new symbol of Space Force. I don't know if you know about the Space Force Guardians. Oh, I do not. Netflix or, uh, or the actual Space Force? The real Space Force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike Pence just uh, announced that they're adding the name Guardians. So that their new name is the Space Force Guardians. Guardians. So are they like the space police? Are we like protecting it's, ourselves it, from like aliens? Here's or, the funny part. We is can't, men in black going on now we for can't real? Give, we can't give Americans any money right now during this pandemic, but we could waste billions of dollars on some stupid Space Force program to chase non-existent threads that I don't see yet. I mean, yet. there might be UFOs, but I haven't <laughs> seen one yet. I want to see one. Allegedly. You know, you know what I mean? Now, how big is this fund going to be? Because if Space well, Guardians, are we having like a thousand Space Guardians or like two, three? And just keep if their ET, benefiting the rest of these. If ET ever shows up and he's hostile, of these, you're going to uh, be happy friends. we wasted all our money on this program. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, we'll get a little more into the Space Wars that's, that's going on right now. And it's between Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Richard Branson, and the Space Force Guardians. Wow. Which is uh, Pence and Trump for the moment, which is going to be Biden in a minute. He's going to inherit that, you know, so I'll give you some updates on all four of those guys right there in the Space Wars. First up, let's talk about Virgin Galactic. That's Richard Branson. From Virgin? Virgin Music, Virgin, Virgin music, everything. Virgin Mobile. Say that again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it wasn't until he got money that he lost his virginity. <laughs> well, he started off in his mom's basement doing selling records. Until he had a competition years later to have people build the first uh, rocket to take people to outer space and back, which is a passenger jet. He calls it Space Travel Company. One of their, their space vehicles, uh, it failed to fire. They did a test run last week in New Mexico, and it didn't fire. So some of the stock went down, which was good news for Bezos and, and Elon Musk. Their stock must have went up. Well, you know, uh, Bezos, his company is called Blue Origin. Okay. And they just got a contract from uh, NASA that they're, they're going to be in uh, supply rockets and moon rovers to uh, NASA, part of the space missions going up to 2027. So they're in the game too. Amazon, that's Amazon. Jeff Bezos. So part of that money goes to outer space to him to compete against Elon Musk and, and the other homies. <laughs> well, <laughs> support the development of they don't trust space. Jeff Bezos he's half the country doesn't trust him so you, you have somebody who's they always do mob him with conspiracy theories and stuff well, well speaking of not trusting and spying that's funny because uh, we'll get to SpaceX and what SpaceX just did was launched yesterday it's called the Falcon 9 rocket and they took a, a payload to outer space but it was a classified payload and it was part of a government mission called NROL 108 and you ask, well, what is that? I think Philly already knows it's a spy satellite. It's the Spy on Us program. They put something out there to watch us. Whenever you're reading a newspaper, they want to know exactly what newspaper you're reading. Wow. And if they can't see it from space, they're not doing their job. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you, they say, uh, I think um, Russia had a technology where they can hear their enemy, for example, United States, uh, using tuning forks by planting these tuning forks in specific statues, monuments. Well, why would you need a tuning fork when you could just use a, a monolith or an obelisk? I guess they're, right. they're the same thing, my boy. Well, well check this out. they are. <laughs> but this is just uh, some information that's that's out there if, if you look it up. On the deep webs. Yeah. Deep webs, dark webs. Well, well you know who's in charge of uh, that spy satellite? It's called the NRO, the National Reconnaissance Office. And that's the government agency that oversees the country's fleet of spy satellites. And now Elon Musk takes them up. Notice he said fleet. Fleet. There's a lot, a lot of, them. of them. Yeah. You know, so so it's a partnership between Elon Musk, the Space Force Guardians, um, NRO. Bezos is part of it now. Branson's trying to get in on the game. If he could just get his silly rockets to fire. 
that's the space wars we'll keep you guys updated on that and these silly monoliths but you know what the newest one is in a quarry in a rock quarry they found a monolith inside of a crop circle maybe we do have to worry that one has to be well there's been people that do crop circles also it has to be them. someone that has money too even yeah, though it's the and time we're not we're not you're in the pandemic everybody has time that's the, true their stimulus check money they got yeah. days off they're bored wow. <laughs> It's fucking like sheet. You're using dressed. sheet metal. Sheet metal's not that Every expensive. You can I buy a giant away. sheet. Just make it. So are we going to build one or not? You know, I, I heard you talking about wanting to build one, and you're talking about wanting to build one. Yeah, let's just build one. I don't we'll go down to your scrapyard. You already got a scrapyard anyways. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's build a few and start communicating with each other through these. You don't want these crazy people to come and knock it down at your house. Like, they're going to come over here and kick it. Christ is king! As they kick down your mind. Yeah, well, with that, folks, uh, like and subscribe below. You know, let us know what you think and uh, stay tuned. You are listening to the Audio Missile Podcast.